know those days where you just don't feel like doing anything? This is one of those days. I, I, I just wanna be real. Today is not, not my day, not feeling my best, but we are ready to go. Hair is done, makeup is done. We've got the appearance of someone who's ready to tackle the day, so let's Let's do this. You know, the reason why you're here is to learn how to start an online business. I feel like a lot of people don't really talk about these steps. Like I, I was doing a bunch of research for this video looking what other content is out there about starting an online business. And from the things I've learned running my own business, all this stuff, I just feel like there was a lot of things that weren't talked about that I feel like you guys should know if you're wanting to start your online business. That is the goal. By the end of this video, you should you should know what you need to do. And obviously it's not gonna be every single step, every little detail, but hopefully it's gonna give you a place where you know where to start and give you a, a plan, because we all love a plan. I wanted to give you one piece of advice. If you don't get anything else out of this video, I wanted to tell you, if you're debating starting your own online business, you're on the fence, or you're just, you've, you've committed, but you're not sure where to start because there's all these things that you want to do, just start. I am a huge believer that imperfect action is better than no action. So just start because one, you will learn so much from experience. You learn so much by doing. And two, you don't wanna look back and regret not starting sooner. Basically, there's not gonna be that perfect moment to start your own online business. As with anything else in life, there's not a perfect time to have kids, there's not really ever a perfect time to get married or whatever it is, just start now. And on this video, I'm mostly gonna be talking about digital products, but I still believe the strategies I share here are gonna help and you can definitely use if you want to sell things like physical products, but that is kind of my mindset going into this video, just so you know, just so we're clear, but I fully believe that the strategies I share in this video can help you if you want to sell physical products. Let's dive in. Step number one is deciding what you want to sell. Now, if you already have product ideas, if you already have things you wanna do and sell online, great. Take out a piece of paper, write those down, type them on your computer or on your phone, whatever it is. But this can also be an area that a lot of people get stuck on and it's the first step. And so they go, okay, I really want to sell things online. I really want to create that life where I can work from home, basically working from my computer, AKA, I can work from anywhere, but they have no clue what to sell. So if that is you, don't stress. I have some questions here that hopefully can help you decide because you gotta get started. You gotta get going on this thing and I don't want you hung up on getting stuck with what product should I sell. So question number one, do you have any hobbies you're really good at that you can teach someone else to do? So let's say you're really great at photography or you've taken a bunch of classes on photography that you can teach other people. Now, here's the thing I wanna make sure you guys know. You do not have to be the top photographer in the world to teach photography. Basically what you have to do is if you wanna teach people who have no clue about photography, how to get into photography. You just have to know a little bit more than them. But these are just hopefully ideas to help you get those ideas flowing. So second question is, do you have expertise in your job that you can share with someone who is interested? So let's say you're really great at writing or you've been working at another job and you are really knowledgeable with technology or finance or counseling or coaching, all those things. What can you share with someone who's maybe interested in that field of work? Question number three, do you have a background or story that would be interesting to other people? And this can do include things like weight loss or finding love or building a business or parenting. People love stories. This is a little bonus tip for you guys. As you get into selling on, in the online space, the more you can utilize stories, the more successful you're going to be because that not only helps people connect with you, but they also can really understand how what you're selling can help them. So that's huge. And if you're sitting there going, my story is not interesting, stop that. Your story is interesting because there's only one you on this planet 
you are unique. So question number four, is there a best-selling book or TV show out there on a topic that you could expand on with your own expertise or experience? So there's a bunch of YouTube videos out there right now that are huge, they're very popular of doctors reacting to medical TV shows or lawyers reacting to TV shows, things like that. Like if you have an expertise in a field, but there's books or TV shows out there, what can you add on with your own experience, your own little spice? Question number five, do you currently sell a physical product that could be amplified by info products like eBooks, courses, or masterclasses. And I think it can go the other way. So let's say you're selling a lot of digital products, but you wanna now turn and create some physical products, that's great. But if you're already selling physical products, but you really wanna get into the online space because being in the online space is huge. If you're not on the online space, life is rough for you as a business. Question number six is you can pick a software or existing product to be an affiliate for. So let's say, at the end of the day, you look at this video, you watch it, you, you're, you're staring at a blank piece of paper. You can always choose and honestly do what I do, which is affiliate marketing. I, right now, don't wanna create products. I don't wanna worry about that. So I just choose other people's products that they've already created that I love using and I sign up to be an affiliate for them. And then when I promote those products and other customers go and buy that product through my unique link, I get a commission. So basically, I'm a glorified salesperson, but I don't have to worry about creating the product or the customer service or the website for it all that stuff I can just be an affiliate marketer for it I love that and I also have like a gazillion other videos on this channel by gazillion I mean like 15 so feel free to go check it out and my last thing with this step is most the time scratch that all the time there are three core markets that your idea for a product fits under and those three core markets are health wealth and relationships basically any product you choose, you have to decide which core market that product is going to fit into. And it doesn't have to be traditional. Let me give you an example. So I saw this advertisement once for Gillette men's razors and they position the ad that like if you shave, it will make your woman more attracted to you or make you feel more sexy, things like that. So they position this men's razor under the relationships market. So they're talking to people in a way like, hey, if you wanna improve your relationship, basically you should use this razor that was the idea any product if you look at it it can fit into one of these three categories so if you're clear on that you're gonna be a lot better set up for success when promoting the products in future steps step number two is finding your people you need to find the people you want to actually serve now that you know what you want to sell you now need to find your dream customers. And here is some advice that man has changed my business and that I see once people start focusing on this, it's really massively changed their business, but focus on the customer, not the product. If you are not sure how to find your dream customer, who you want to actually serve, I'm going to give you four questions that you can answer. It should help you start to narrow down who your dream customers are. The first question is what does your dream customer want? Second, what is your dream customer struggling with? Third, how will you serve your dream customer? Fourth, what will you sell your dream customer that they will want to purchase? And while you guys are in this mode of figuring out who your dream customer is, it's also a really great idea to look at what gender is your dream customer? What job do they have? What platforms do they love to be on? What influencers are they following? And you can start to create this avatar essentially. So when you are creating content, when you are building the product, when you are building the website, you have that person in mind and you create everything to help serve that person versus creating everything and going, who do I want to give this to? When you have the customer in mind, you're going to be so much more successful and who you're serving is going to be so much more clear. The third step is building an email list. You guys, emails are so, so important. First of all, it's an asset that you own. And essentially it's a list of people that you could contact at any moment and make an offer to, AKA make money. And if there isn't a better example of how important it is for you to have an email list than 2020, I don't know what is, right? COVID-19 hit, businesses started shutting down, a lot of small businesses really started to struggle. But if 
you have built an email list, you don't constantly need to be finding new customers. If you're adding value to that email list and building that relationship, you can make an offer at any point and you're gonna have a percentage of that list buy from you, which is such an incredible resource to have. And a simple way you can start building an email list is create something you can offer your dream customers for free. Build a simple lead magnet funnel. I talk about that in other videos, but create it where basically they put in their email address and in exchange for that email address, you give them this free thing. It's such a great way to start collecting email addresses and get people introduced to you. Step number four is utilizing sales funnels in your business. Having a sales funnel is so crucial to selling things online because sales funnels not only increase the amount of leads you get, but they also increase the amount of money you make off of every customer that comes into your world. And again, I have lots of videos on this channel talking about sales funnels. I'll link them down in the description below or have them up above here. But sales funnels are essentially a 24 seven selling machine. So you don't have to be on there every minute of the day making sure everything's working. And once you've nailed down the copy, you've nailed down the design, now you can essentially have that sales funnel running in the background. And I personally, I use ClickFunnels to build my sales funnels. I love it, it makes life so easy. And technology is so advanced these days that it shouldn't be ridiculously hard to build a website or a sales funnel. Literally in ClickFunnels, you can drag and drop. And if you can turn on a TV, you can learn how to use ClickFunnels. So that's what I use. But again, there are other softwares out there you can look at into building your sales funnels for your business. Step number five is pick a platform. So now that you have your sales funnel set up, you now have a way to deliver your product to your customers online. You now need to pick a platform that you're gonna focus on to get traffic because creating a presence online is so, so important to the success of your online business obviously, but I highly recommend picking one or two platforms that you're going to start to utilize and really learn about to help get traffic. Now I'm mainly using YouTube and my focus is on YouTube and there's a lot to learn when it comes to becoming successful on YouTube. And a lot of it is creating consistent content, but I also supplement that with TikTok. So I've chosen TikTok. I really enjoy that platform and spending a lot of time learning how to be successful on that platform, growing my following, seeing how I can engage and build relationships with people on that platform. But again, I highly recommend one, maybe two, okay? Because if you start to focus on Instagram and you're also gonna do Facebook and then you're also gonna make content on YouTube and you're gonna blog, you are gonna burn out so quickly. Especially with this day and age, things are constantly changing. So you need to be there ready and seeing those updates so you can stay relevant. So picking a platform and then learning the strategy behind that platform. Step number six is over deliver. And you may think that this is such an odd step in the process, but this is one that I feel like not a lot of entrepreneurs actually talk about, but over deliver for your customers, show your customers that you care. And by over delivering, you're not only going to stand out online, but instead of just creating customers, you're going to be able to create raving fans. It's not necessarily about the numbers, it's about the quality. But if you start building that relationship with your audience, they know you're someone that truly cares about them. They know that you're someone who is here to help them solve their problems. You are here for them. They're invested in your story. They're invested in you. You're going to see so much more growth and your journey is gonna be so much more enjoyable because you're gonna be able to make those connections with your customers that when you have product launches, they're excited to read your emails, things like that. But that can only be achieved by you over delivering and really just giving everything you can to helping your customers solve their problems. And step number seven is prepare your business to be scalable. And if you're someone who is just starting out, this is perfect because what I would highly recommend you do is every time you're building something for your business, imagine, all right, if I were to hire someone or I, if I were to hand this off to someone else, would it make sense? And would they be able to understand what I want from them? And by building everything with that mindset from the moment you start, you're gonna be ready for that point in the future when you want to hire on a team or you want to hire someone to help you edit your videos, whatever it is, you're gonna be ready for that point versus building everything and then having to adjust it 
to accommodate someone else coming in and sharing that vision with you. For example, like I mentioned earlier, I'm focusing a lot on YouTube and learning how I can better grow on the platform and create better videos for you guys. And so I've created a Trello board here that is essentially my process in creating YouTube videos. So I've got, these are my three kind of main ideas for my channel. And then in the queue is videos I want to make, you know, coming up for the channel. And then I can then move this card over here once I filmed it and it needs to be edited. So that's this video right here. So once it's filmed, I can then move it in this section. And then I've also got this checklist. So if I were to hand this Trello board off to someone and let's say I wanted to hire an editor, I've got this checklist here that's already started that I could then really, I could add in some more details and then they would be able to know how I want things to be edited. And then once they've edited that, then they can move that card over to here. And so now I can see, and the person who's editing can see that, and now we know it needs to be uploaded. And so if I want someone to upload it, I, they can do that and move that card over there, things like that. So now it's just a process, and again, I have, you know, for the upload, I have a whole checklist there of things I want to happen and same with the editing, things like that. So then essentially I could share this Trello board with someone else and they're gonna know my exact process for creating my YouTube videos and I can edit things directly in there. The reason I bring this up is because now you're actually building a business and you're not just working on being self-employed your entire life. Thank you all so much for watching. You know where you need to start and you know the things you need to keep on your radar as you experience this awesome and tough journey of being an entrepreneur and being your own boss. If you've gained value from this video, feel free to hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. Have an amazing day and I will catch you on the next video. Bye dudes.